Where do I even start? Of the numerous bits and pieces of the Evangelion Fallout, the most prevalent and lasting has to be the many copycats that were developed to catch the comet's tail that was Ava's success. Between the years of 1999 to 2004, there was a boom period of shows that obviously owed a lot to Anno's work. Some were able to elevate themselves well beyond the title of derivatives, such as Razaphon, and some didn't. And in Devadazi's case, that's putting it charitably. Calling Devadazi an Evangelion ripoff would be accurate, but it completely undersells just how abysmal this soul-crushing, dour, way-over-its-head lump of pig shit really is. It's the kind of horrid that doesn't even scrape the notion of so bad it's funny, it's just a miserable, worthless fucking show that's hopelessly out of its depth and tragically lacking in self-awareness. But at least it has the single dumbest name of any anime I've ever covered. Devadazi complete with pretentious colon for maximum stupidity. And great choice for the title font, guys. It looks like you spelled it with unknowns. But still, at least it's not as dumb as some of the titles of video games I used to review. Seriously, R. Tanelica Koga, Nell of RCL? There's only two real words in that verbal diarrhea! The anime opens with an erratically cut beginning, where the story just basically throws the viewer into the fire without any regard to world building or coherence. Not that we need a lot of input to know that these are aliens and that this robot is Devadazi, and it's being piloted by a dickhead kid. But because we don't know much else and are expected to glean meaning from obtusely animated shots of characters in the negative zone writhing or visceral but thematically puzzling shots of their internal musculature around their lacrimo, the story fails to grab the audience's attention. You can have all the faceless, nameless soldiers in the world killed off for the violent spectacle of it, but if we don't know who these characters are, how can we be expected to care? And believe me, when you do learn about these characters, the last thing you want for them is to survive. But this scene appears to be nothing more than a taste of what's to come, as the show slams on the brakes and dials back the story a hundred days before all of this, when not Shinji and not Asuka are arguing about truancy. What's the point of going to school now? There you go again. You have to go to school. Since when did you become my guardian? Ten years ago. <sighs> Why don't you take school more seriously? Oh gee, what a surprise. The little douche's mom is probably dead. I say probably because the anime never explicitly states or makes it clear. Which is a shame because I would have loved to see Devadazi's version of this guy. My arms are getting tired. But it's not long before we meet the show's version of Masato, who just happens to be recruiting in the area for Spirit, a government-funded organization that are fighting off the alien threat. Why, oh why, is the Earth Defense Force handing out flyers on street corners like they were fucking Greenpeace? And just to piss me off even more, not Masato's name is... Misako. And Spirit? Well, guess what Sailey is German for? Soul. Or Spirit. Why not just give Not Shinji a pet puffin and name him Puff Puff while you're at it? I've seen more subtle nods to better anime and fucking Ruby, and they have a goddamn corgi named Zvi for crying out loud! Not Shinji decides to join Spirit because, get this, it means he doesn't have to go to school anymore. Our hero, ladies and gentlemen, Ferris Bueller by way of Shinji Ikari, who also can't stop awkwardly staring at girls' butts and skirts. And this is where the anime goes from annoying to confusing reprehension. Which is a phrase I never thought I'd say. Not Shinji and Not Asuka are introduced to Not Sele and are quickly interviewed to see if they can make with the program. Do you think that kid can finish the program? Well, you never know. Maybe he might turn out to be just Amala's type, who knows? By the way, Miss Takashina, how do you feel about putting on a nice miniskirt when you come to work? Sir, that's sexual harassment. Oh, and I don't have to take it. Uh, okay? Significance, anime? Like, are we supposed to think this guy's an asshole? That girl that came with him, uh... Is she your type, sir? No, 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 that's not it. <laughs> But she is very cute. Well, I guess that answers that question. Fuck you very much, you creepy son of a bitch. This doesn't go anywhere. It has nothing to do with what's going on. It's just an unnecessary and, quite frankly, souring scene that doesn't do anything but make my skin crawl. 
Oh, and to top it all off, not Shinji's dormitory is filled with nothing but girls in school outfits. While that does seem like an awesome setup, trust me, that many women living under one roof loses its appeal real fast. Just keep that in mind by day three, and your bathroom has been taken over by 30 different shampoos and conditioners, and there's dirty, sweaty bras left in your sink for the girls to clean later. Oh, and guess who has to clean out the hair trap in the shower sink every goddamn morning? You guys do know that hair traps trap more than just hair, right? You got dead skin, you got filthy lint, and joyous of joys, dingleberries galore. It's like trying to clean out a hillbilly's beard after he's been swimming in a septic tank. Worth it. It's hard to convey this since I'm editing my thoughts with the anime, but the story is told like an eight-year-old who's doing an oral book report, and he's trying to get through it as fast as he can because he really has to tinkle. Scenes just end abruptly and begin just as jarringly with no sense of fluidity or narrative through line. Like here, it immediately cuts to months later with Not Shinji doing some tests, then cuts back to his first nights in Not Sele, only to cut back to months later again. Why? Did the anime forget that the dormitory scene was to come before these test scenes? Cut and paste ransom notes are more seamless than this heap. Even their painful expository scenes feel like they were edited by a chimp with ADD. I promise you, I have done nothing to the footage you're about to see. Since the aliens appeared all over the world a year ago, there has been significant damage. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We remain in isolation with many other countries and need to take precautions. Oh! Big baby! Ah. However, we still do not know much about the identities of these aliens. Ooh, I like this. We get to study math. That kind of infuriating start-stop editing is endemic all throughout Deva, and as much as that pisses me off, we still haven't gotten to the worst of it yet. So in between all the jarring scene transitions, the undercooked plot, the obnoxious main lead, the petered out character moments, and just pretty much everything, Deva finally has its own real aspect that it can call its own. And they can keep it. Seems that a curious thing is happening with all the students in spirit. All of their hormone levels are off the charts, spiking their sexual drives. And don't you dare say a fucking word! Now, this is stupid for many many reasons, chief among them being that we don't know if it's Devadazi itself causing this, or the aliens, or not Ray here, but let's not gloss over the sheer idiocy of the situation. First of all, yes, testosterone does indeed figure into one's sex drive, but it's not Austin Powers' mojo, alright? Second of all, testosterone and estrogen don't just determine a person's sex drive. They do other things as well, like facilitate facial and body hair, increase bone density, and in the case of testosterone, promote aggressive behavior. And while at some points you could argue that Not Shinji here is more aggressive when he's in Devadazi, but, uh, he still looks like a goddamn Ken doll, even when they establish that months have gone by with this phenomena happening. God forbid we have one anime male lead that looks like his testicles dropped, right? Everything is related. Witten effect? Vanderberg effect? What else was there? Coolidge effect? I don't think they are the same as mice or monkeys. Okay, does the anime even know what those effects actually mean? The Vandenberg effect is where male mice urine causes nearby female mice to be more receptive for intercourse, so unless not Shinji is a mouse and into golden showers, then it's fucking stupid to even bring up, regardless of what R. Kelly's lawyers will have you know. And the Coolidge effect? That's when primarily males experience renewed sexual interest when introduced to a new willing female partner. Considering that not Shinji has always been a horn dog, I don't think anything has been renewed. Actually, funny story, the Coolidge effect was named after our president, Calvin Coolidge, because of a particular anecdote. Seems him and his wife were visiting a chicken farm, and uh, his wife noticed that there were a lot of hens to not a lot of roosters. So she asked how many times does a rooster have to breed in one day? And when she found out, uh, she told him to tell Mr. Coolidge that. So he did. And when Mr. Coolidge heard that, he then asked how many different hens does one rooster get to breed with? And when he found out, he told him to tell her that. I just don't want to talk about this anime anymore. I 
I don't think they are the same as mice or monkeys. I think I'm affected too. <laughs> what? Well then, uh, we'll have to give Kay the title of King of the Stallions, huh? <laughs> you mean you're gonna call a 13-year-old boy stud? Well, that's not creepy at all in the slightest! The fuck are you even here for? Between dreams of sexing not Ray and taking pills that are suggested to be the real source of his uptick in testosterone, even though the anime just said it's an unaccountable and unexplained happening, not Shinji is introduced to Devadazi and his female co-pilot, not Ray. We'd like Amala here and Kay to get in. Huh? Amala? But this is also kind of sudden. I mean, is there any danger involved? Well, we can't force you, but Kay had the best results of all the males. Yes, all one of them. But who is not Ray exactly? Well, she's just some girl who was found in the Arctic by a team of explorers, I think. Wait a minute. A team of explorers finding something in the Antarctic Circle during a time of great catastrophe. Well, at least Deva's growing more subtle with its rips from Evangelion. Professor Anno. Or not! Fuck you sideways with a 2x4, Deva. Oh, while I'm at it. Hi, Ramiel the Fifth Angel! I would say that I didn't expect you here, but no. No, I did. So it seems that Devadazi runs on human sexual energy, and no, this is not a hentai, and the experience of being inside Devadazi is overwhelming for not Asuka. Look what happened to Amala. And there are all those other girls that could have ridden it. There was no reason for you to do this. Don't lecture me now. What? I am not going to let you ride this thing with the other girls. I will be the only one to ride with you from now on. Huh? <laughs> 14-year-olds, assholes! But the growing threat of the aliens has many of the top brass on edge, and the fact that their only hope lies on a robot of mysterious origin being piloted by horny teenagers isn't very comforting. Ugh, why don't we just use nuclear weapons to blow them into pieces? Impossible! We'll just be repeating the same mistakes the others made. The only way we can defeat them is by using Devadasi. No! You maniac! You blew her up! Oh, damn you! God damn you all to hell! I sincerely wish there was a way to properly convey just how choppy the story is. We see them gearing up for a fight, but then flash back to some undetermined time when Not Shinji encountered Not Rei, flash forward, but not all the way to what I think is the present, when the students are all still learning about the alien threat, and Not Shinji takes another one of his pills that somehow makes a girl behind him orgasm herself into unconsciousness. Wait, 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 wait. Gabe? If you will. Yikes, yeah. You can't have a flashback with a flash forward in it. Remember, an archer clip for any occasion. That's the anime abandoned difference. So what is causing all of these upticks in sexual drives? The medicine? The aliens? Devadazi? Not Ray? Which is it, assholes? <sighs> Go home, plot. You're drunk. And as if we didn't hate Not Shinji enough, the little fuckboy here attempts to assault Not Rei, hinting that he's being driven by his excess testosterone, which is bullshit, but she manages to get out of the room. But this doesn't go unnoticed by Minato. I want to examine you. Don't worry. Uh, oh, it's uh, okay. Uh, Leave it to me. <laughs> this isn't the most egregiously terrible thing I was allowed to show you, but it probably is the most morally repugnant. The scene doesn't get any more explicit than what I showed, which is a whole lot more than I can say for Genocyber, but it still is, at the end of the day, a scene where an adult sexually assaults a child. Genders be damned, this is what the scene is. Since I've done nothing but compare Deva with Ava, I might as well bring up a similar scene in the end of Evangelion. Masato kisses Shinji, telling him that was a grown-up kiss, and should he return, they'll do the rest later. While similar in tone, which was probably by design, what the developers of Deva failed to capture was the context of this scene. Masato was dying from a gunshot wound, and in a last-ditch effort to try and motivate Shinji to break from his own psychosis for long enough to get him inside the fucking robot, she promised him sex afterward, 
banking on teenage hormones to do the trick. While this doesn't vindicate her by any means, it paints the act as a desperate last resort, rather than an attempt to satiate some base desire or intent to harm Shinji. Deva, on the other hand, has no such context. Minato sees the attempted assault, decides to assault not Shinji herself, with the anime justifying this terrible act by just having Minato collect not Shinji's sperm to confirm that he's the special and was meant to pilot Devadazi. It's never brought up again, there is no repercussion for Minato, and the anime clearly portrays not Shinji being traumatized from it. Headache again? Uh, well, Miss Takashina gave me some medicine. I lay down for a while and I feel better now. Thank you. Yes, sir, I feel like a new man right now. Horrible acting and directing aside, Not Shinji is trying to deal with the situation by just laughing it off. But it's undercut with these dark, looming shots of Minato to clearly show what he's thinking. <sighs> Depraved is too short a word for this. We finally flash back to the present, where the alien threat has caused surrounding soldiers to liquefy into a puddle of protoplasmic goo. Gee, I wonder where they got that from! The fight itself doesn't last very long, and considering that the enemy insists on drawing a parallel with not Shinji going apeshit on the alien with his assaulting not Asuka, the brevity of the fight is welcomed. But, like a child throwing a tantrum, the plot drags this notion kicking and screaming as Not Asuka discovers Not Shinji downing enough boner pills to get Hugh Hefner half chub, and he proceeds to find Not Rei and bump uglies, which gets Not Asuka rightfully pissed. We're about to hit the last episode, and up till now the plot has been a meandering mess, but now it's like a free falling save from the top of a skyscraper. All you can do is just wait for the inevitable impact and hope there isn't too much lasting damage. Now that Devadazi has been proven effective at destroying aliens, the UN steps in and decides to move it out to China to cull the threat. But not Asuka isn't having it. I'm leaving spirits now because I want to return to my home. What do you mean? But Miss Naoki, what happened? The battle of the other day was so bloody. No one told me when I joined spirits that I would be in such danger. But we finally defeated the enemy. I think I've completed my duty. How did you not know that fighting aliens was going to be dangerous and or bloody? And more to the point, you killed one alien. If there was only one, how in the fuck is it an invasion? But it doesn't fucking matter, because as soon as Not Shinji and Not Rei enter Devadazi, all hell breaks loose, and people once again start dissolving into Lipton soup mix. Why? Devadasi is releasing high levels of nanomachines, so it can absorb more energy. So it's... Literally because of... Nano machine, son. You know you fucked up when your plot is harder to follow than a Metal Gear game. Still, the whole base is under lockdown, and the brass decide to nuke the entire area. But it's all for naught. What is that? Devadasi just gave birth to that. The energy from the explosion was so powerful. It gave birth to a new machine. Devadasi gave birth? Does that mean it's a child? I don't understand. What does that mean? It means that nobody is running this ship, and we're about to hit the iceberg at full speed. And lo and behold, the new alien robot thing is being piloted by Not Asuka, who got enveloped in the primordial ooze and somehow wound up here. Sure, fuck it, why not? The two have it out before Not Shinji manages to break through to her, and shocker of shocks, Not Rei finally spills the beans. What do you mean? I was created? You were envisioned for the eternal future. For the eternal future? Humanity, Deva Dasi, and I, between all of us, we created you to commence new life. Mom? 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 Yep, not Rei is his mom. Somehow, and this is supposed to be significant. For some reason. It's like they couldn't figure out how to fit every single Evangelion plot point in the series, so they decided to dump it all here at the end. You are reconstructing the deconstruction with Elmer's glue. This goes way beyond being a copycat or a wannabe. This is just outright plagiarism. <sighs> But the day is saved, and the future of humanity is looking bright indeed. 
Except, sight your mind, all of this never happened. Not Shinji was just daydreaming the entire time. Except, maybe not, because Not Ray is here and oh, who gives a fucking shit? Devadazi is mind-bogglingly atrocious. It makes no sense, its sexual politics are reprehensible at best, and it carelessly apes from Ava without understanding thing one about Ava. In a word, it's unrepentant. Deva is the kind of anime that copies your work, does it badly, turns it in early, and claims it as its own. It's the Mark Zuckerberg of anime. But the worst thing about Devadazi? It's depressing. We've talked about the many kinds of bad there are and how they each bring their own unique flavor to the table, and while I said that bad cringy comedies are the worst kind of bad to sit through, I think I might have to make an amendment to that. While being irritated, bored, or embarrassed are feelings that your art shouldn't list, they could at least spurn some kind of action from it. You can escape boredom by entertaining yourself, anger can motivate you to do something better than what made you angry, but depressing misery? It just sucks the life out of you, and you just don't know what to do with yourself, other than making sure you never have to sit through that experience again. Especially if it made you miserable for no narrative or artistically sound reason. So, in conclusion, fuck this, fuck everyone who had a hand in making it, and fuck me for sharing it all with you. Fuck everyone! So, where do we go from here? The next episode of Anime Abandoned is the 150th episode, and I need something big. I need something that's equal parts great, terrible, fucking simple, but confusing, romantic, filthy, violent, touching, just something that's going to put my brain in a car crash called ALL MY FEELINGS! <sighs> Till next time. Long live Benetopia! <laughs>